Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane, and this is episode number 35 of my This and That series, and I have several updates for you and viewer appreciation gifts as well. I received a few weeks back this beautiful wooden sign here uh, given to me by a man by the name of Mitchell, and thank you very much, Mitchell. And you'll see that in uh, future videos in the background from time to time. It's quite nice, and here's his business card if anyone would want to contact him. Thanks, Mitchell. A man by the name of John Gallo sent me this beautiful book several weeks back, uh, Brown and Sharp and the Measure of American Industry. He knows how much I like Stara tools and Brown and Sharp tools, and I just finished reading this last night, and it's about 200 pages, but it's a wonderful historical book about the Brown and Sharp family and the Brown and Sharp company, and uh, what the rise and I would have renamed this the rise and fall of Brown and Sharp, and they were plagued with labor relations uh, from the 50s on, and eventually that did them under. And um, I'm sorry to hear about that. There still is uh, a Brown and Sharp company, but it's I think bought out by somebody, and it's heavily into electronic tools now, which of course is the way to go. There's probably enough micrometers in this world uh, to last. Uh, a thousand years, the old screw type. Nobody uses them anymore besides me. Thanks, John. Several of you watched a recent video where I made this solenoid motor or engine, and I was lamenting the fact that it had to have such a short stroke. And several people corrected me, and they said, well, why don't you just cut a hole in the end here, and you'd have a longer stroke. So I did experiment with this scrap one that I had. I just drilled a hole and that gives me much more of a travel here on the solenoid piston or rod. Let me hook this up to power and I'll show you. And I could have made it with a longer throw on the crankshaft. Oh well, the job is done. This is an old Ford starter solenoid. And we've got the piston in there. And watch. So I have at least an extra quarter of an inch travel. If I ever make one of these again, which I doubt. Thanks for watching. Mr. P.C. Cunningham from Australia sent me these two wonderful magazines, and he sent me magazines before. You know, that cost 18 bucks from uh, Australia, but I do like old engine and old machinery magazines, and uh, one thing I like about the British and the Australians, they still have the larger format. They use bigger paper, but there's interesting uh, reading here about tractors and, and uh, steam-powered things, so uh, thank you, Mr. Cunningham. I appreciate that. That makes good winter reading. I received a gift, a box, uh, from Amazon a few weeks back, and it did not say who it's from, other than sometimes I get a gift, uh, Amazon type gift, and uh, the man identified himself as Keith, and thank you very much, Keith, but my thumbnail here has been much uh, talk, and that's finally growing out, but, you know, I did not do it with a hammer, because I'm right-handed, I don't know what I did there, but anyway, as a joke, uh, he sent me these, uh, Stanley Goatskin Hammer Guard. I never heard of such a product, and I think they're kind of expensive, but the whole idea here when you wear these is that you've got this big piece of rubber here protecting your knuckle and your, your thumb and your forefinger so that if the hammer does slip, it hits you on the tread there and leaves you unblemished. So that's pretty neat. That's it. It'll make a nice pair of work gloves. Goat skin. Wow. Thank you, Keith. Hammer guard. Some of you may have watched a video of mine some time ago where I produced this uh, Bridgeport device for cranking up the knee with an electric drill. Well, Vic Rivers contacted me, and he's made several things, and they're on Thingiverse, and uh, he has 3D printed ones on Thingiverse. I printed out a couple of them. 
I think there's seven, several different, yeah, seven different modifications that he made. One thing I told him is I said, try to make it a little shorter than this. This one is so doggone long, so he did make it just about a half inch shorter, and it works by, uh, in the different versions, there's a hex, or a square rather, for your adapter. There's also a hex right there, and what is this inch and a quarter socket will fit right on the hex like that so you can use your oh your your driver whatever I guess this let me show you what it looks like on the computer and uh, that was a glitch that got fixed that's one of the earlier versions then we'll go on over to the bridge board and use it here I am sitting in front of my computer and looking at Thingiverse and if you look up and do a search for Bridgeport Mill Crank Knee Adapter, you'll find this by Rivers Company. That's Vic Rivers. And there it is. And as he said, there are seven versions of this. And you can print out whichever ones you're interested in. And here I am at the Bridgeport demonstrating Vic's device works great and here it is again using a big socket inch and a quarter socket Sure beats the heck out of this. I recently received a nice present from Doug Bollinger, and he lives in Mount Holly Springs, Pennsylvania. Do not confuse him with Jim Bollinger, who lives in Florida, and is the Lincoln welding man that we all know and watch his videos as well. But Doug sent me four packages of carbide drills, and they're just tiny, tiny bits. I'll show you here in a second. But he said that he was secretly coveting my little camera on drill press for a long time, and finally was able to get one. Again, this is a very expensive drill press. Do not confuse it with something that you might get at a box store. This is a $1,000 tool. However, I didn't pay that. You know I wouldn't pay that, but uh, it's a high-speed precision drill press. He's got one, and he said that he often likes to drill small holes on it. And that's what this drill press is made for. So let's take a look at these tiny little bit, tiny little carbide bits that he sent me. I know I'll be able to use the, some of those in my model work. All right, here they are. That starts at 3 millimeter. They're all metric. It works its way down, and there's about 10 of them there. Then the next set here is from 1.1 millimeter to 2 millimeters. They're all sharp and very nice, and they have a straight shank on them. And the fluted portion is short enough so you're not going to have uh, flexing and breaking. This set uh, just is 1.4 millimeter. They must all be the same. Doug says he uses a lot of these in his work and discovered them, I think he said eBay. And here we go from uh, 0.1 millimeter to a full millimeter, but th these are so small, I'm not even sure you can hardly see that. This one, I, that's so small I can't tell if it's broken off or it's just a short stubby one. It must be broken. Tiny little bits. Now, I'll probably never do anything that small. But just in case I ever do. So, thanks, Doug. That's awesome. I'm not sure I ever saw drill bits that small, let alone carbide. So, those will be used strictly on the uh, little camera on. And they're all color-coded. I thought that's neat. Neat idea. All right, that concludes this video. Now, if you sent me something and it isn't shown here, I held a few things over for the next one because the video was getting too long. So, thank you very much for watching my video. Please continue to do so. And this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video.